Hello Giants fans, so the good news is that football is back, the bad news is the Giants got their asses handed to them in Dallas 35-17. to In the first quarter it seemed like we had a chance, but once the game just proceeded it was like, yeah, I mean, you know, Dallas is the way better team. And I kind of knew that coming in, I mean, a lot of people knew that, the Cowboys were favored by 7 points, they obviously won by a lot more than 7 points. But the Giants were competitive for at least the first quarter. There's a lot to get into for this game. So let's start on the offensive side of the ball. So first thing to get into, obviously, is Eli Manning. He did look good, but not great. There were a lot of checkdowns involved. Didn't turn the ball over, which is nice. He finished 30 of 44, 306 yards and a touchdown. And looked really good on the first drive. I mean, it was a Pat Shermer drive that looked like it was scripted. I mean, most NFL coaches have like their first 10 to 20 plays scripted, and it just looked like a perfect drive. I forget how many plays it was exactly, but it did not take the Giants long to get down the field because obviously Saquon Barkley had that long run. I think it was 59 yards or something like that. So Eli looked good most of the game, but it wasn't perfect. He, I wish he went down the field more. I understand the Cowboys' defense prevented that from happening like the Cowboys want you to check down and I think the Giants entire offensive game plan was kind of flawed we'll get into that actually right now can Saquon Barkley get more carries that's the way you could have opened up the Cowboys defense if they're going to play their safeties all the way back like they're inviting you to run the ball it's like why not even try I mean Saquon Barkley was averaging 10.9 per carry today 11 carries 120 yards I don't know why he didn't get fed the ball more. You took this guy second overall. He's the most talented back in football, but yet you don't want to give him more than 11 carries. It just made no sense to me. Like, if the Giants were giving Saquon the ball and he was, like, running at 10 yards per clip, like, obviously the Cowboys would have to make defensive adjustments. You can't have that happen every time. You're like, that, that's, that's what would, like, open up the entire offense for you. I don't know why Pat Shermer didn't use him more. It made no sense to me. Evan Ingram, I just want to single him out, looked fantastic today. Finished with 11 receptions, 116 yards, and a touchdown. The touchdown was a great play. Uh, I give Pat Shermer credit for that play. That was really nice. So, I mean, a lot of the Cowboys fell for the run there. They, I think the Giants had six offensive linemen in on, that, on that play as well. So it was uh, just a nice play design. So he looked great. It's just a matter of staying healthy. We know Evan Ingram is really good at football. You just need to stay on the field. That's really it. Cody Latimer had a few nice catches. He had a, a deep ball at one point in the game. I forget how many yards it was. Sterling Shepard was consistent. He was catching things that were thrown to him. So, I mean, he didn't have a big game. I believe he had, where is it, uh, 42 yards, six receptions. So not great, but same with Benny Fowler. I didn't put him in, but Benny Fowler had a nice fourth down conversion at one point on the toe tap. So, he had a nice game for uh, his standards. So the offensive line, I mean, it wasn't really the issue today. I mean, obviously, the last few times we've played in Dallas, especially the last two years, the offensive line's been a massive issue. It's like kind of the reason we can't get anything going offensively. Well, I can't really blame the offensive line today. We didn't really hear uh, Demarcus Lawrence's name brought up or Tyrone Crawford, any of these guys. Like, it was kind of just like... You know, there was pressure, but it's not like the Giants were getting sacked all that much. I don't really have the sack numbers on top of my head right now. I forget if Eli was sacked. He probably was a couple of times, but maybe one or two times. But, you know, it wasn't like the offensive line lost them the game like they have been the last couple of years. So that's definitely a positive step in the right direction. So Pat Shermer's first drive went well, not so much after that. The first play was a screen pass to Barkley. Barkley fumbled the ball, which we never see. It was kind of weird to, uh, to see that, and I think Elijah Penny jumped on it, so um, credit to him for being there. And they had the long run play, and then in the uh, on the one-yard line, Shermer had that great play on the play action, and they hit Engram on the left side of the end zone for a touchdown. Just worked beautifully. Of course, Daniel Jones got in the game. It made sense. I mean, everyone on Twitter was like, why not put Daniel Jones in? And, like, I kind of get where they're coming from, the Giants, in that perspective. I feel like once you go to Jones, you kind of can't go back. But it makes sense in a blowout game. It was 35-10, to 10, I think, or no, 35-17 when he came in. I forget what the score was. I think it was 35-17. There was like four minutes left or something like that. So they said, yeah, Daniel Jones, I mean, you're, you are suited up today. Go out there and show us what you got. So the, the, the Daniel Jones ball security thing, kind of a, an issue in a way. I mean, he had a couple of fumbles in the uh, preseason. I would say, I don't know how many were his fault necessarily. I don't think any of them were. I mean, he did mishandle the, um, you know, the, the snap one time, so that's his fault. But him getting blasted from behind, I wouldn't really consider that his fault. The one today, obviously, is his fault. He was kind of just nonchalantly just running and 
um, you know, the ball popped out. So it was kind of weird. It wasn't like it seemed like Joe Buck wasn't on top of it when the ball came out, but he needs to work on that, of course. I mean, it's not really a big deal. I, I definitely care about his passing more than his ball security at this point because you can fix that, obviously. So, I mean, offensively, I'm not too concerned about this team. I kind of like what I saw today. And the offensive line being good is a, a key piece to this team being successful down the road. So as long as they're good and they're playing well, the Giants should be fine offensively. I don't know what to expect from Eli, but if the Giants keep losing games like this and it might not necessarily be Eli's fault, he's going to get pulled at some point. And, you know, it's just looking more, more and more likely at this point. There are people that say, like, you know, Daniel Jones should start next week. You have nothing to lose. I understand where those people are coming from, but at the same time, it's only the second game of the season, and Eli just had a 300-yard game. So, I mean, you know, there's both sides to it. I would give Eli the start next week. I mean, obviously, I'm anti-Eli at this point, but I would give him the start next week. I think he played well enough. It's not like Eli went out there and lost them the game today. It's not like he went out there and threw three interceptions and, like, turned the ball over in the red zone and stuff like that. He did turn the ball over. All right, he did turn the ball over in the red zone. It was a fumble, and before I forget, actually, that play pissed me off because it was a fourth and one, I believe. I don't know what the score was. They were probably down like a couple touchdowns at that point. I believe it was the third quarter. And on that play, he had Sterling Shepard running across the field like 10 yards out. I don't know if he was in the end zone or not. I forget. I think he was. And there was a Cowboy defender like, defender, like a half step or a step behind him. But, like, why not give him a shot? Like, you know, it was going to take a perfect throw to get there, but why hold the ball and turn it over? You know, like, you might as well throw the ball and take a shot. If you throw an interception, you throw an interception. So what? I mean, I feel like Eli is too conservative sometimes. Obviously, he has a lot of interceptions over his career, but the last couple of years, it's been very conservative. I mean, in that situation on a fourth and one, if it was like a, a second and one or a, a first down and ten, you know, I understand not wanting to throw that ball, but it's a, it's a fourth and one. Why not take the shot? The worst that could happen is if you throw an interception, you're going to turn the ball over either way. I mean, so Eli just stood there, took a, you know, uh, took too much time, and obviously the ball was, uh, it was fumbled. I forget who hit him, but the Cowboys got the fumble. So, you know, I think Eli has to throw that ball, just let it rip next time. There is no downside. You know, you turn the ball over and and then you take the sack. I mean, who cares? You know, you might as well just throw a ball if it's fourth and one. So that's the only thing that annoyed me from Eli today. Of course, there were too many checkdowns, but as I said, the Cowboys defense, they were kind of baiting them to doing that. I think the whole thing went wrong because Pat Shermer didn't give Saquon the ball enough, and they better fix that next week. I mean, the Bills do have a really good defense, so we'll see. I mean, I hope they give them the ball. If you have a good offensive line and a generational running back, shouldn't that go hand in hand? You know, your quarterback's 38 years old. I hope they smarten up and give Saquon more carries next week, so we'll see what they do. On to the Giants defense, and man, oh man, was this a rough performance. The first thing that stood out to me is why is Antonio Hamilton starting across from Janoris Jenkins? We were told all preseason that it's going to be DeAndre Baker, our first round pick. He looked good in preseason, the one game he played. He looked good in training camp, but no, we start with a special teamer as a starting cornerback. And I was like, I said this in my 53-man roster prediction video, and I was like, if Antonio Hamilton's like starting at corner for us at any point this year, we're not in a good spot. And like I understand if there's injuries in front of him, like if the next if the first three guys on the cornerback depth chart were injured, then I could see him starting. But why do it week one? Like it made no sense. You have Corey Ballantyne, you have DeAndre Baker to start at corner, but you still start Antonio Hamilton in front of those guys. And he had a horrific game. I remember the thing that sticks out to me was the Randall Cobb play where he stiff armed him on like a third down and five. And they had him like five yards short of the first down marker. But of course, Randall Cobb stiff arms Antonio Hamilton and picks up the first down. It just drove me crazy. So that made no sense to me. Dak had all day to throw. Of course, the pass rushers were not getting there. We all know that. It's no secret. You know, Lorenzo Carter, not much of a factor today. O'Shane Zimenez in the time he played, not much of a factor. Kareem Martin, not much of a factor. Who's the other outside linebacker I'm forgetting right now? Marcus Golden, not much of a factor. I think he hit Dak once, but he was offside, so it really didn't matter. So, you know, B.J. Hill had a couple of pressures. I don't think Dexter Lawrence had any quarterback pressures. Dalvin Tomlinson, I don't remember him doing anything in terms of pass rushing. So the Giants need some sorts of pass rush. That's how you win in 2019 at this point. Like, I think we all should know that. It's funny how all the good teams in the NFL have, like, elite pass rushers, and then, like, we don't, obviously. 
Like you think about it, like you look at the the Chiefs. They had you know D Ford last year. Now they have Frank Clark. You look at the Chargers. They have Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram. You look at the um, who else is a good team in the NFL? Now I'm forgetting. Um, even the Eagles have like Brandon Graham, you know, or Fletcher Cox. Like they have guys that create pressure. Obviously the Rams, Aaron Donald. Like these elite NFL teams have guys that can get to the quarterback. You look at the teams that made the playoffs last year, I'm sure, like, you know, a lot of them, I would say 80% of them have, like, an established elite pass rusher. We obviously don't have that, and it, it hurts, you know? Like, that definitely hurts your defense a lot. There were points in the game where DeAndre Baker was getting burnt <laughs> multiple times, I saw it. One was Amari Cooper on the touchdown, most notably, and I think one of them might have been on, I don't know if it was Michael Gallup or somebody else, I forget, but... He had a rough game for his first NFL action. I mean, I still think he'll be fine. I don't think he's a bust because of one game. That would be the dumbest thing to say. So I think he'll be okay. It's just he needs to progress as the season goes on, of course. The Cowboys' third down conversions. Now, I don't know how it finished, but at one point during the game, I checked what their third down conversion rate was because it was pissing me off how many times they were converting on third down. The one time they didn't convert on a third down that I can remember was on a third and five when Dak still had all day to throw, but Dak being Dak threw the ball like a yard short of the guy, and it should have been a first down, but Dak just made a terrible throw. That, I think, was the Cowboys' first drive of the game. So outside of that, the Giants weren't able to get them off the field on third down, and that really speaks volumes to your pass rush. If you don't have a pass rush, it's going to be easy to convert third downs. I don't care how good your secondary is. Obviously, we don't have an elite secondary. I think our secondary is all right. It's not elite. I don't care how good your secondary is. If you're getting no pass rush and giving the quarterback all day to just sit back and set a tent and make any kind of throw he wants, it's easy. I mean, all Dak Prescott did today was just catch the snap, sit back for two to three seconds. The Giants were you know, playing five yards off their man and then just throw it, hit them in the numbers and pick up first down after first down. Occasionally, there was a big play in there. But, like, you know, it was just easy for Dak today. It was way too easy. A quarterback like Dak Prescott should not have a perfect passer rating against you. It should not happen. I mean, I, I could see if it was a Patrick Mahomes or an Aaron Rodgers who did that to you. But Patch, or um, Dak Prescott having a perfect passer rating against you and, you know, how many attempts was it? Let me look real quick. He had a decent amount of attempts today. Um... 32 attempts, 32 attempts, 405 yards passing, four touchdowns, no interceptions. That's not good. And you can't have that happen with a guy like Dak Prescott. That can't happen. Imagine if the Giants faced an elite quarterback. It could have been even worse. So, you know, that that was just not good to see. The secondary let up too many big plays. Of course, the Randall Cobb play, I think it was, when no one was covering the middle of the field. There was no deep safety or anything like that. I don't know what happened that play. I'll go over that in the film review video, of course, and try to figure out what the hell happened there. The first, um, you know, the first touchdown the Cowboys had to the tight end, I don't think, who was it? I, I want to say Jeff Swain, but I think he's in Jacksonville. I think it was Blake Jarwin, I think his, his name is. So he had a big touchdown, the first uh, touchdown for the, the Cowboys. I forget how long it was, but it was a pretty long touchdown. So once again, you know, another year and the Giants still can't cover tight ends. It's just the same shit, different year. Um, there was soft coverage by the corners. I don't know if that was part of the game plan or not, but it seemed like the Giants corners were just afraid of being burnt and they were just playing five yards off their man. All they had to do was just run curl routes and Dak Prescott was hitting them. It was just an easy pitch and catch all game and they just worked their way up the field. The RPO killed them, the run pass option. I know a lot of people talk about RPOs and it's kind of annoying, but it's true in this case. Like there was a specific example I can remember on the Jason Witten touchdown when the Cowboys were like a yard away from scoring. Michael Thomas, our backup safety, was, you know, deciding whether it was a run play or to stay with Jason Witten, who was his man. And he, he bit too hard. So Dak Prescott, all he did was he got the ball, you know, was faking to his running back, either Zeke or Pollard. He saw Michael Thomas come in and said, all right, I'll just flip this easy touchdown to Jason Witten, and they scored a one-yard touchdown. So there were multiple occasions where the Giants defense was falling for the RPO. You can't have that. And there's just not enough talent at the edge, you know, or on the edge, or for any pass rushing position, defensive end or anything. There's just not enough talent there. The whole thing about the Giants defense, it's all potential. Like, there's no established player. There's no star on this defense. We should know that. Like, Janoris Jenkins maybe in his first year with the Giants was a star. They don't have a star anymore on this defense. It's all potential. That's what the Giants defense is made of. Like, yeah, Lorenzo Carter has potential. Jabril Peppers has potential. Uh, B.J. Hill has potential. All these guys have potential, but, like, they're not... NFL proven stars there, there's not an elite player on this defense and it hurts you know like as, as, as I said before these elite teams in the NFL at least have one defensive star we don't have that and I understand they're they're all very young players they're 22 23 24 some 25 
very young players on this defense, and it should the Giants' defense should progress in a positive way as the season goes on. But if Josh Allen comes to MetLife next week and drops 40 uh, as a member of the Bills, that's not good. They need to get better week by week. I don't expect them to have a perfect defense at any point this year, but just make the positive strides. And you know, a lot of um, young players are going to play a lot this year. The Giants, the Giants will get to see which players are worth keeping and which are not worth keeping. If Lorenzo Carter comes out and has a 10 sack year. You keep him. He's going to be a future star probably. If he has a two-sack year and doesn't do anything in the run game, you're probably like, okay, we missed on this guy. But, like, you know, these guys are going to play a lot, and there's going to be a lot told this year if you watch the games. I mean, you know, if a guy is doing nothing week by week and he just hasn't shown any progression, I think you're going to have your answer right there. So that's really all i got to say for the defense. It was embarrassing. I mean, a team like this should not put up that many points. I figured – I got the Giants points right. I said they would score 17 points. I don't know if I said it in my schedule video, but I said it on Twitter. Someone's like, hey, predict the score. I was like, 27-17 Cowboys, and that was a touchdown off or eight points off. So I got their points right, but defensively, it was worse than I expected. I don't think anyone expected the Giants to love 35 points today. If you're a Giants fan, maybe some Cowboys fans did or other fans did, but I didn't think it'd be this bad. It's not like the Cowboys have a firepower that should allow them to score 35 points on you. I understand they've been that this team's been together for a while. Their offensive line is better. Michael Gallup looks like a year two breakout candidate. Amari Cooper's proven he's really good, and Jason Witten always kills the Giants till this day. But um, you know, this is not a team that should be scoring thirty plus on you. It's just you know, it's I can understand if it was a more elite offense, but this this was not it. So it is what it is. You know, there's no going back on it. That Giants have to learn from this mistake and. It was rough. It was definitely a rough game defensively. Just a lot of like throwing your hands up as fans, and you're just like, "What the hell are we doing?" I don't know. I'll try to you know go over a lot of this in the review video or the uh, the film video, which will come out on Tuesday. I keep thinking today's Monday, but this is Sunday night, so Tuesday night I'll come out with that video hopefully, and we'll go over some of that stuff. So tune in if you're interested. That's all I have to say for this. I mean, it was disappointing. I expected a little bit more. I didn't expect them to win this game, but I expected more, more compete, more more fight. But it is what it is. Hopefully they come out next week and beat the Bills. They're going to face Josh Allen, who had four turnovers today. I don't think he'll throw tor- um, have four turnovers again, but he's definitely a quarterback who is prone to having turnovers. So hopefully the Giants defense can take advantage of that. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, um, my NFL video review comes out tomorrow. I'll make week two predictions as well. My predictions sucked this week. I don't think they were that good at all. So there was a lot of exciting games, though. It was fun. So I'll go over that tomorrow if you're interested. So, yeah, that'll be it for this video. I will do my review next week of the Bills game. Hopefully it's a win. So I'll talk to you guys next time.